Hey everybody, um, David Beck, psychic medium, certified life coach and published author here. Voted in the top 20, I believe, in the United States this past year. I don't know if anyone's watching, I can't really tell. I don't think anyone is yet, so... You know, um, I want to share some stuff with you. And um, some may in the past have told me, and it's too much to share about yourself, David. But the experiences this evening as well as this past week have taught me otherwise to speak and sh share because that's when awareness happens. So, um, huh. many of you know, I mean, hello, I'm a psychic medium. I talk to dead people. Somehow, information comes through. And for my clients, okay, it, 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 it touches. It, it, oh, I don't even know how I do it. It's kind of, it just happens. I got to be me in that. And, and messages come through, right? So, um, <laughs> now, also, many of you, um, uh, I, I hope you really don't. See that? Someone's messaging me, the person that really has touched my soul. And is gonna, and through this, is gonna touch yours also. Hello, everyone. Oh, oh, now I'm starting to see people, so this is like really vulnerable. Um, so, you know, many of you know I'm newly single. Yeah, I was in a 20-year relationship. I was 19, and my now ex-partner, 19 and, and, you know, 20 years, and, and we grew our separate ways. Um, and before that split happened, before the actual no longer living together, which... The, um, we have a house together. That house, this house began to go through um, a foreclosure process. And, um, and that's a whole nother story. Um, and, and well, that is another factor that added to the separation of us. And my ex moved to another state and I have been left with a lot of responsibility. And for the first time being a single, I am a gay man, single gay man, who was in a 20 year relationship, who got separated right when gay marriage became legal. And we were recognized as equals. For the most part, somewhat. Um, so here I am, a single gay man living on my own for the first time in, well, I was I, 38 because I'm 41 now. I was j just about to turn 39. Ah, I was never good at math. Do the math. Um, and so August, this August coming up is three years. I've been living on my own for the first time alone, alone. I've living alone for the first time I've lived on my own since I was 17. Um, so, single gay man, right? Um, and, well, want to date, want to meet people, and there's like Match.com, and there's apps, and because of this day and age that we live in, we have opportunity to meet people this way, and go out, and... So I joined bowling 
because why? I was on a certain app looking to meet people and I found an amazing ad. And I'm like, okay, bowling, I like bowling. Go meet people this way. Now, where I found that was on Craigslist. Yeah. I'm a man, I like to have sex. Nothing wrong with sex, right? We're all human beings, how do we all get here? And we all have our different beliefs for whatever reason, religion, book, whatever we want to blame. <sighs> judgment, all judgment. I'm a single man, I was in a relationship for 20 years. I'm looking to meet people, this new world. Okay, many people will judge, many people won't. Whatever. So, okay. Um, and, you know, being a gay man, I get tested every three months. Because when I was younger, when I was 14, actually when I was like 10, if we want to go back to the first time, I was molested by my cousin, who's in jail now for life. But not because I spoke up because I had to keep it a secret when I came forward for the family reasons. Because I was told to, I was a child, right? Okay, whatever, when I was 16, my cousin was caught because he had harmed so many other boys. Because while I didn't have the courage to speak up, I didn't have the courage to go against what my guardian at the time this was her nephew. Here I am speaking her, her, sharing her story, but this is my life. So, you know, kept it secret to honor, whatever. Turn on the news, he's captured for other. So for my entire life, I've had to deal with the guilt and the shame for not coming forward, even though I was a child. And we get that. Okay. He's paying his dues. My grandmother told me one thing when she said it. I used to fight her on it all the time. Let me speak up. Let me tell. No, it's in God's hands, TJ. It's in God's hands. I hated God when I turned on that news. As yet, also, I loved him because she was right. Somehow... Okay, moving on, got to do my healing with all that, blah, 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 right? I'm doing blah, blah, not to dishonor it, to get to the main point of all this. But there's so much. So, um, there's that secret. So now I'm sharing with the world because I'm live. Can't take it away. Well, don't want to take it away. And maybe some will leave, and that's okay. But this message is for every gay man, every straight woman, every young boy who's learning to come to himself, to accept who he is. For every person that feels so much anger within, they want to pick up a gun and shoot someone because they're confused on their sexuality. They're keeping secrets. And when we keep secrets, the natural energy is truth comes out. So, um, during my time of healing in this new single life, um, there's this new drug called PrEP that it helps block the HIV virus from getting in you. Okay, great, more protection as a single gay man, right? Okay, peace of mind, because I was working on that in therapy. Yeah, I started therapy, too, in this new single life a couple years ago, like clinical therapy. I've done therapy in other ways, life coaching, my dance, all things that helped me get through having a mother and father who abused me physically, mentally, all that, having family members take advantage sexually, 
having the next few things. So here I am now, 14, I'm, a t uh, uh, I'm dancing. Um, my first, one of my first male dance instructors. Well, we had relations. I was 14, he was 33. Yeah. I was being molested that way as well by someone yet. Hello, I'm a gay man and I liked it and I don't blame, I've done my work on that. So please move beyond that blame right now if you're feeling that because that's not. So, um, cause there's a gift in this because this is what this is teaching me. Um, so we stopped having relations because I got into another relationship. Um, and in my adult life, I learned that this man was dying because he had AIDS. It came full blown. I had then learned that he knew the year that we were together. He knew during this time, which was 1988. In the 80s, those of you, we remember, those of us that are older, we remember, it, we didn't know. We didn't know anything about this disease. People were dying. When you, the people that contracted it, the shame, the guilt that they feel for a mistake that they, a mistake, that they made when they were just in love or they were whatever and the shame and guilt that they had to go through and how, and yet here we are now, there's a new drug prep and we've advanced. Okay. We're working, letting go of that shame and that blame and, and cures are happening. Cures are finding a way for people to, to move forward. So, um, Oh, someone's email saying I can't watch. It's making you emotional because this is the person that really is inspirational. He'll watch later. Hi, everyone. So, um, anyway, um, I learned he was HIV positive, um, but he taught me condoms. He taught me condoms because then I got tested. Boom. Now, in order to be on PrEP, you got to be HIV negative in order to get PrEP. So I'm on PrEP and there's that new drug. So, you know, get checked, get, go and, and do it. Um, because now there's ways, you gotta let go of the shame. Cause people don't tell you some, and right now in these moments, people don't tell. Um, so I went on a date the other night, and then three dates, and you know that question came up, you negative? Yeah, okay, I'm on prep. Now, in this day and age, you can also, like for me, I can have a printout. I wasn't wise of mind in some areas. And yet in other areas, yeah, I'm wise of mind. But in this single life, we take that risk. We take the risk in following our hearts. So, in our third conversation last night, I learned this person is undetectable. And I learned that because in conversation with this person, um, I'm not saying names because we're not going to blame in this because there's a lot of, there's more to this. Um, I learned, you know, undetectable. Okay, great. <laughs> you lied. Got a lie. Now I was feeling now I, I was kind of knowing something was up because again, my abilities, I, I'm, I'm getting to learn them. It's a constant 
evolution. And you know, we doubt ourselves. We doubt those hunches, right? And, and then sometimes we, you know, for me, I want to not judge and have compassion and everything leads to everything. Everything happens for a reason. I was up front, I let this person know I'm a psychic medium, as I always get. What you getting off me? Yeah, I don't want to mix business and pleasure that way. You know, but if you really want a reading, you can pay me. I'll, I'll read you. Probably won't go to the pleasure part. Yet I'm not going to say, I never say never. Got to follow my heart. Yet you got to pay if you want a reading. Especially we just met. Because if you're in my life every day, as I've learned through my life, you get messages. Because that's just who I am. And the words I speak in the sharing, now when I share, it brings up people's fear. It brings up the defensiveness. It brings up all of that. Right? So. Um, I ended up, when, when he was reading, wanted me to read him, I said, you know, well, I was like, oh, I totally get that. Okay, cool, great. And as we're talking, I kept hearing a name. Now, I know with my abilities, when it's pounding on my head, I don't want the headache. So, okay, I keep hearing this, this name, this initial. And then I, I was getting something else with it. And so I let this person know. It's their last name. Now, I've got all this on text, because that's the great thing about text. It's affirmation that... You know, it's like we're writing in our journal. This is the actual evidence. Sometimes we need the evidence. As I'm learning through this house process that I've been working to prove how the, it's the bank's error. And then everything escalated. So now, back to this. So anyway, I continue to keep conversing. Because, look, I've taken the risk. I'll go get tested. Look, I'm liking you. Let's see where this goes. All of that. You know, ooh, but yeah, you know, you did lie. But maybe I didn't hear it. Mm, no, I heard it. Like, I know. I heard it. I heard it. Because I know what I would do if someone told me they were undetectable. And up front or HIV positive. Not because I'm judging not because I'm looking down upon them, but because I know I have purpose in this world and I really don't want to take the, I don't want to go through any of what you went through or when you found out, right? Or what anyone, we don't want that. We don't want anyone to go through what we went through that was painful and harmful. Right? We don't want to hurt people. We don't want to pick up guns because we're so angry to shoot someone. Right? So, we communicate. So, okay, I'm learning because, hello, we can be smart about this. There can be a, an HIV positive person and an HIV negative person that can still have an intimate, in all levels, relationship and be wise of mind, and yet there's always the risk. There's a risk in everything. I'm risking right now speaking up. Be but this is my truth. And also helping s hold someone accountable in respect and honor. Because remember, I know. And I will do what I will do to stand in truth. So, I come home, and now I friended this person. And saw two mutual friends that aren't friends, really friends, like, I know, no, no. Oh, okay. Not even, don't even look at that. Well, then today... I got this feeling to go and look again. And I noticed that a friend of mine, who's young, just became friends with him. Oh. Now this friend 
When I started my single dating, I've had the experience of meeting someone that was 19. And I was up front with this person, sharing with them what I was going through and working through my stuff. He's an adult. No, he's not. He's an adult. No, he's not. All of that. Yet having conversations with him and he has sent me emails saying certain things about these conversations we've had because we we didn't continue a relationship in that a, a sexual relationship we continued a friendship and we communicated about that so i noticed that they're friends now i also know the experience of this person and messages that i remember sharing with him when i gave a reading I said, I asked how he knew this person. And he replied, oh, please, David, tell me how, what, how do you, oh, and I then shared. He started freaking out and then got in touch with that guy. And that guy messaged me saying, hey, what's up? And I said, oh, I'm angry right now because I just learned a friend of mine. You didn't tell. You didn't tell. Before you, and he, this person is so young. You didn't tell. Now, some people would have said it's none of my business, right? Well, no, we have a responsibility. If someone's not speaking up and harming other people. So I said, I'm pissed right now because you didn't. So this conversation went back and forth while my other friend was messaging me. So I was having a three way conversation. Never done one of those, by the way. <laughs> um, not to say I never will. No shame. Just got to be wise. <laughs> so, this person's 20 years old. The person that is 46. 47. An adult man. Really? Not telling, for one, anybody. Or saying you're telling. No, you're not. You didn't, because I know what I would do. When that said to me, not because I'm judging again, remember? So I'm sharing all basically that in text messages. And he's like, I will stop. I cannot believe I feel like shit right now. And I'm feeling that message and I'm going, maybe, maybe something I'm saying is getting through, but that's my responsibility. And it was my responsibility to tell my friend and my friend thanked me in this email saying, thank you for telling me because now I will know and get tested. And even if I have it, I'll, I will know what to do then. Okay, but then that's on them, right? That's their work. I can't hang on to that. But I have to hang on to this, my work, because I'm speaking up. Ask questions. Get specific. Trust your instincts. Trust your guts. Don't shame yourselves. I can't shame myself for even, you know, I'm taking precautions and yeah, hello. I'm making my choices. I'm a single man. Who's judging me, right? But me. And maybe whoever else in the world, probably, because I see people dropping off and I don't see many. And I, that it's just who this is for. Whoever. You ask questions. Get specific. Don't feel the shame. Move. Feel it. Feel the shame for a minute, but come to terms with it. Stand in your truth. So, you know... Uh, 
being a psychic medium led me to learn this information, to learn and possibly speak up so it can stop speaking the truth. I mean, this whole week for me has been about speaking up and standing in what I am so afraid of sharing. And, you know, hello, here I am talking about my experience last night and the truth I learned, but yet my 20-year-old friend who wouldn't have known unless I came and told him. And now, maybe the person who lied to us will stop and be truthful and, and, and maybe this video will hold them and help them, help them and support them in their accountability for their life. And most importantly, maybe now all the people's lives that this person affected by maybe not speaking the truth. He didn't speak the truth to me, and I believe my friend, he didn't speak the truth to him. Which, hello patterns, people. We all have patterns, right? We have patterns. The only way to change is by owning what our pattern is. And if a common theme of people telling you a pattern is showing up in your face, we can avoid it, or we can embrace it. So, you know, now I get to make new choices for the next however long. And even new choices are going to be made for me now because of my awareness. Because then the choice is on me. The choice is in my... The thing with the guns and everything, we, hello, how are we taking choice away from people? Of course, the natural response is going to come up of anger and all of that. We're human beings. So I hope this video holds who I do believe my two friends are. This, this man who, you know, this video will hold him accountable because again, my, my psychic mediumness was putting two to two together and look at what I learned. And now I somehow, I believe the words my friend shared with me when I sent that email Letting him know that he needs to go get tested. Because of a common connection that him and I just ended up having. That connection happened for a reason. So I could help pass a message on. And I could learn something from it too. Deep down, I don't like speaking up and airing my business. Yet, how do we learn? How do we know that we're not alone? Right? We're one. We're all the same. We all bleed. We all have bones. We all look the same inside. We all have a skull and a skeleton. You know, someone today picked up a skull and was like, what's the purpose of this? And I was like, well, we all look the same. That's a symbol, maybe. We all look the same inside. Skull. Okay. We got to stop judging. We got to stand and speak in our truth. Even if we shake. Even if we cry. If someone gets defensive, that's not on, that. If, if we're defensive, if we get heated, that's on us. Yet what if that heat is coming back? What if you're an empath? An empath, I'm not only feeling mine, I'm feeling everything around me. And so it's up to me to decipher what's mine and what's whoever's. And that, the only way is to communicate. Communication. So... Go out and get tested. Everybody. I mean, unless you fully know in your heart you're like in a committed relationship, whether gay or straight, go get tested. Don't be ashamed. 
Let go. I mean, let me rephrase that. I, I don't want to take that away from you. Feel the shame that comes with it because that's just given. Shame and the blame and the guilt. We're humans. It's here. Feel it. Call it out what it is. Own it. I'm feeling shame with myself. I'm blaming this. We got to own our choices. We got to own what our actions. I own my actions. There's words that I do not say because our words, I always say the words that we speak are the thoughts that we speak. Think, the thoughts that we think are the words we speak, which then are the spells that we cast. They're the choreography, the action steps. We walk our talk. Truth always gets seen. Those of us that do this work, being a psychic and a medium, there's skills that we learn. Many utilize abilities for manipulation. We all manipulate in some way because energy, we can manipulate it. Now, are you doing it intentionally to harm people? How are we getting our needs met? Are we asking for help? Are we, are we connecting? Are we putting one another down? Are we competing with one another? Hi, I see. Oh, look, stay strong, David. Back. Your real friends care for you and are here for you. The light will shine through the darkness. Yes, absolutely. And for everyone. Real friends show up because truth always shines through when we b listen to ourselves. And then we're willing to speak up and say, hey, why'd you lie to me? Or, hey, something's not added up with this story. Hey, why are you getting, what's the defensiveness about? I just asked a question. And, you know, people will keep coming at you, keep coming at you, keep coming at you. Okay, well, I'm not here to fight. I'm here to stand in truth, and I'm not going to walk away anymore. And there's so much more experiences that has brought, but everything leads to somewhere. But for my friend to email me saying, thank you for telling me, because it has now changed my life, even if I've show up negative, which please, those of you that believe in prayer, <laughs> pray that maybe that's what this is about. Letting go of the shame of what the mistakes we think we made. It brought us to here. So stand in your truth. Someone comes at you and judges you and puts you down. And if you feel a pinch in your back or a stab, you know that. Don't feel bad about it. You're just not aligned. Whatever. Or maybe you're speaking up. Well, something changed. Whether it be you or them. So, again, straight women... Gay women, straight men, gay men. Get tested. It's Gay Pride Weekend. Here in Chicago. Honor the gift of you. Honor the gift of your family. If you're a married man and you're going out and sleeping with a gay man, and you're not protecting yourself, and let me tell you, I know from experience when someone asks or speaks, well, <laughs> I know from experience what I do with it is my choice, right? It's our choice. But then you go home to your wives and your children and maybe because you're dealing with whatever struggle you are dealing with, get through that struggle, man. Get through it. Share if you, the people that love you, ask he, right? If your wife loves you, she'll respect you for being truthful. 
And if it's not about being gay and you just like to have an experience of, well, hello, let go of the shame. Go to the adult bookstore and hello, there's people that can show you stuff. And hello, the internet. <laughs> Point is, stand in your truth, people. And let's go, let, 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 let's go, let, let us let go of the anger. Let us heal the anger. Now, those of you that are here, because look at what the world's happening. Look at, look at, look at, look at, look at. We know we are energy. We affect one another, whether we realize it or not. Because what's the free likelihood? What's, oh, someone just said my video froze, but I can still see this, so maybe it'll show up. Um, share this video because may, share it later, come back if you feel called to the message, whatever. <laughs> um, just get tested, speak your truth, stand strong and, and believe because I know I got to keep going and I know I just really was vulnerable right now and Who cares? Thanks, everybody. Send prayers and Reiki energy for my young friend. And for me, of course, because I can go get tested. Right? And for the person that we're having this experience with, because... I've offered to be there for this person because mm -hmm. let's see what he does. Let's see what of a man of integrity he is. None of you know him. Never said his name. Mm -hmm. Now, mind you, proofs in the pudding. I'm a psychic. I feel when people lie. I'm not a freak. I just acknowledge my skill. It's a muscle. Oh, Donna, just as I was about to say, just like being a dancer, it's muscle memory. You work it, you work that double pirouette, eventually you'll get your triple pirouette. Donna used to dance for me. <laughs> Hi, Donna. <laughs> You have a wonderful brave and have a golden heart. Thanks. I believe it. I'm working on embracing it more. Because let me tell you, I may have been voted like number 20 in the United States, and I know how, but yet I judge myself and I'm like, how am I in this situation? Because I'm healing and working my way out. And I'm very overwhelmed. Those that know I'm taking care of my doggies too. And, 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 you know, I'm not really making such an income. Because I'm working on getting my career rather than getting a conventional job. So, you know, it's all been overwhelming. So, and now add this. Yet. Look at everything I've been through in my life, and here I am. We're still working on my book. I asked, someone asked me earlier, someone on Facebook had mentioned earlier they loved my shares, and, and um, did I, have I thought about writing a book on my experience of being a psychic and medium? And, and I am. I've been working on it for 10 years because my story really does take courage to talk about any of our stories, hello, whatever you've been through that is the most painful takes courage to let it out. That's the only way to get cure the, cure the cancer. Come to terms with it, embrace it as a lesson, a gift, because somehow, somehow, it sucks in the moment. It sucks when you have to go through it. It sucks when you have to get a divorce. Not have to, let me shift that, see? 
When you choose to get a divorce, when you choose to let go, when you choose to live a way that makes you happier or whatever, whatever label, whatever feeling it is you feel, you just got to become the truth for yourself. So yeah, it's all overwhelming, but, and, it's all overwhelming, and here I am. Here we are. And I know this is, thank you, the you know, seven of you. It keeps going from seven, eight to nine, and, you know, maybe if there were a lot more people, I'd be more nervous. I don't know. But yet, no, this needs to be said. It's not about me being nervous, right? We got to, oh, Scott. Keep on dancing, David Beck. You are a good soul. You did a great service to both your friends. One found out the truth. The other one felt the guilt that should have been told in the first place. Love you. Keep on dancing. Now, you know, this person has said they've, they, they told us. Both of us have said, no, you didn't. Now, maybe they don't remember. Maybe they were, or maybe they're lying. Only that person knows. Only that karma is on that person. Only that cloud, that own guilt that they're putting themselves through, whoever. That own shame. Well, then we have choices to do something and make it right. Letting the people know, right, who you've been in contact with. Just, you know, and you know, that's kind of like what, like, hello. <laughs> I believe psychic mediums are, and everything, every creation, videos, musicals, movies. Yes, they're fantasy, but, and, and also based in reality. And where do, hello, they're inspirations. So, you know, vampires, hello, there's such a thing as org vampires. You feel drained. Um, around people, well, maybe you need to do yourself a service and not be around those people. Or if you feel happy around them, be around the people that you're happy around. Like go with the judging them. Because they're working through their stuff. I'm working through my stuff. We're all working through our stuff if we're intentional about it. And we're even working through our stuff when we're not intentional because... <laughs> Life lessons keep coming around until we learn them somehow. <laughs> I keep meeting unavailable emotional men. I recognized it, and then my therapist had said it, and I'm like, oh, look at that. Right on. Even my therapist has acknowledged how she's learned so much from me. Hmm. And how proud she is of me. Which, I didn't hear that as a child. And now, yeah, cool that you're proud of me. Not doing it for anyone else but me. And I'm doing it for the world, too. I'm doing it because I live in this world. Doing my readings, putting myself out there, working to make an income in doing what I love to do that is self-employed and oh, it's a struggle. It's a struggle believing, believing that my career, believing that clients are gonna come to me that need their, to, to help in whatever way. I've been working on how to get myself out there, yet I'm doing my healing. So, you know, one can only do so much, right, y'all? That's why we got to ask for support. That's why we got to ask for help. Because we're not in this world alone. And I had a responsibility to my friend. So, yeah. Now, my friend and I haven't... And, yeah, I told you that story, you know. We remained friends. Oh, yeah, because why we talked about it. Just recently, I had a friend that we were having some struggles about what our relationship was. Well, let me speak for me. I was having the struggle. Yet that person up and stormed away after saying I was so fucking annoying. Excuse my language, but we're all adults here. You're so fucking annoying, and why has everything got to be an argument with you? 
then stormed out of my house. I've experienced that with this person one other time. Let it go. Two weeks, I struggled. There were some things I was working through. Yeah, well, I learned. Yeah, no, I don't want that in my life. Love ya. But no. I know what I, I know my part. I'm up front. I speak up. I'm going to tell you before someone else does, because if someone else is telling you my story, that's on their perspective. Maybe true, maybe not. You only know until you experience the person for yourselves, right? We only know until we experience someone for ourselves. Everything else is judgment or an opinion. I've experienced... People have often asked me what the darkest energy, being the work I do, my God, do you deal with dark energy and what's it like? The darkest energy I've experienced, I believe in this world that the darkest ever is a child being the child who their very own parents' hands were around their throat working to take the life from them. We're all parents. We're all at each other's throats. In some capacity, it seems, in this world now. But that's the darkest energy that I've seen. But there's so much more. I mean, you know. But that I feel. Maybe different for someone else. But a child. We're here to protect these children. We're here to teach these children. We're here to help these children to learn. As so, we, they, they, they. And they're here to teach us, really. They don't have judgment. Until, I mean, there are some children that do. Well, hmm. we all have a mother, father, ancestors. I say this in readings. The information that comes through, it's not up for me to judge. I just got to give it. Right? I just got to give it. Um, I utilize tools like angel and oracle cards. I get names, initials, dates. I get memories. Because... We all have a mother, father. We're all made from man and woman, right? All of us. We all have ancestors. We all have a grandpa, grandma, so on and so forth. Till who knows when, right? Have you traced it back to the, your first, the firsts? Many would say Adam and Eve. Many would say, yeah, the Bible was written by human beings, people. I wrote a book too. Conversations on success, not the Bible. I've been written in other books. These aren't the Bible. Oops. <laughs> you know, rank world's best light worker. There's my photo. I've been in magazine. People have interviewed me. Not the Bible, just opinions, right? Maybe it inspires people. <laughs> Don't want anyone to worship it. <laughs> just get what you get, right? We get what we get from these teachings. These lessons of love. No judgment. Let's stop blaming religion. Let's just stop blaming. Let's stop throwing things at each other saying it's your fault, it's your fault, it's your fault. Let's stop playing the ping pong game and just own our actions. Look at our actions. The best way to see your actions, set up a video camera. <laughs> set up a, a video camera. Record a conversation. Ask someone to be willing to record a phone conversation. It's one of the things that, you know... Being a dance instructor, I learned from videotaping. We learned. We learned from watching our body. Yeah, some say to be perfect. You know, to get it perfect. Everything is perfect. Everything is perfect. When we're in connection, when we're living what it is we're meant to be living in a place of love. You know... In this new single life of it's I'm, I'm also learning that, you know, there's open relationships and there's people that it works for. And there's all sorts of different experiences to be had as a single man. One, I'm a Libra. Now, I don't give power to the I don't I don't 
I, I do my best to not give something all power outside of me because the power is within me, right? And we all have our ancestors. We carry their memories because we, we're made from their blood. We, we carry their teachings because they taught us, right? So here people say this is what these planets do. Okay. Ah, kind of adds up in certain areas, but I'm not going to give it power. I'm going to embrace it for me. I'm going to allow it to guide me and teach me. But I'm not going to give power outside of me. I'm going to do my best because I'm not a victim. I've been a victim in circumstances, in experiences. And I've always somehow become victorious. Because I'm not in jail. I didn't pick up a gun and kill someone. I didn't stab anyone. I didn't... Well, when I was 19, I did punch someone. I told this story to a friend of mine today at a work meeting. I'll share it now, since we're live and people are still watching. And When I was 19, when my, my ex, it was the first time he was meeting my mom, it was Christmas Eve. We took a friend. My mom answered the door with a knife in her boot, boot and said, here, you may need this. Because we were at her trailer. Her boyfriend, then she turned and lifted her shirt and she had a bruise on her back. Christmas Eve. I'm like, uh, mom, her boyfriend at the time, he's dead now, David, um, comes out and comes over to me, you're 19 now, pushes me, you're 19 now, pushes me again, you're 19. My head went back. I punched. My ex always said he lifted up off the ground and flew. I saw red. So then my mom, um, then I see my brother come out and I see blood on him. My little brother who was living, my brother Stephen, he was like five at the time or something. I saw the blood and I'm like, and David was trying to come at us. I kept going, punching, banging his head into the floor because I was also hearing, and this is a very strong word, but this is what I was hearing while I was protecting my mother and my brother and my friends and myself because this man was coming at us and I let anger go and fought. Got to hear my mother yelling, look, a faggot's beating your ass. Fueled the anger, all the anger built up from that woman who said that type of stuff all my life. And inside I'm going, I'm helping protect you. Anyway, we got them out of there. We took them to a restaurant. My mother decided to go back. Okay, her choice. I couldn't get my brother away. I couldn't... I struggled all that time, whatever. So, you know, I let that anger out. Then, I slapped my ex once. Clenched my fist. Opened and slapped. The reason? He had a hickey on his neck. Hmm. So, still not right to, I don't, I'm not saying it was, it's not, I don't feel right that I slapped him. Yet, hmm. Slapped a, sh you know what I mean? It was a slap, it wasn't a punch. Yet, hmm. And I continue to stay because, hello, I'm relationship oriented my entire life. I've wanted to create a family because I didn't really have a family. It's something I'm, I'm aware that I'm working on. <laughs> I've been intentionally working on this for since before I started life. But I worked on it when I was choreographing. Dance students would still come forward saying how things that I said to them, they still, it got them to college. It got them to the dance company that they're in now. 
I've had way too many experiences of people, in a way, giving me permission. And I don't need permission, but saying it's okay to stand in who you are. So, here I am, paying it forward. Anyway, this is a long... Oh, hi, Dorothy. Dorothy and I went to high school together. Be strong, be yourself, drop the toxic people or anything toxic to you. Keep working on your dreams, enjoy life. Absolutely, that's what all this message is about. <laughs> right? Yes, yes. <laughs> we gotta keep, keep, keep it on. And being aware of our own stuff because hello, let's face it, we're human people. We all have fear. We all get nasty. We all somehow in some way have those negative thoughts. You know, you know, just own it. You may be calling people names in your head. You may be screaming at them. Why do we have to get to that level? Check yourself. Back up. Let's not blame one another. Anger is not going to do. Anger is going to, being mad at this person, yeah, I'm mad. But calling him names, shaming him, is not going to help the situation. Because he's already shaming himself for whatever mistakes he's made that I'm unaware of, that any of us are. We don't know our demons and our stuff in each of our closets unless we share and not be shamed about it. Yeah, my mother and father beat me in different ways. And yes, I was molested and I was raped at gunpoint. All of that. And I'm here. And I didn't do, like, there's the thing. I didn't do what was done to me. Because I chose differently. Now, sometimes I think I'm a little like I'm going, mm -hmm. no, no. And then if you feel like you're going a little, you reach out to someone to remind them of who you are. So, get out me people, join a bowling league. I know our bowling league is, I think, starting up soon. Join roller skating, join a dance class. <laughs> I'm working on some projects. Well, in my mind, I, I do need help. <laughs> I'm looking for an assistant. I'm looking for for a marketing manager. I, you know, I, I teach myself everything. I barely went to school when I was a kid because I was dealing with an alcoholic mom who was dealing with her own demons. Then I was... Living with a grandma and a dad. I go, no, I wasn't even living with my dad. Living with my grandma. Taking care of me. Going from house to house. Dealing with everything that was still happening to me. So, you know, one can only do so much, right? Y'all know. Those of you single parents. Oh, oh. Be proud of yourself. Keep going. Hello. I have my two fur babies. Single daddy. One has a spinal injury that's costing money for medicine, and one has, Mug has some belly thingies. But we can't give in to the fear. We can't go be like, worry, 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 worry. We gotta take care of it. We gotta, and then there's only so much we can do. Trust, trust, trust your soul, trust your spirit. Your spirit, your soul is your God, your inner knowing that connected to something outside of us all. You're outside of me. You're a god and a goddess. You're a creator. How are you creating in the purest love of you? Thank you for the heart. I don't know who that was. Thank you. I see these little hearts fly by. That's uh, the technology is so amazing. And it's a little scary because, you know, now this is live and it's out there. We take risks. So, all right, peeps, please send Reiki energy and love to my friend. Now, if my other friend hears this, 
watches this maybe. Be accountable. Because clearly I'm letting you know I speak up. Later. I love you all. And some I've never probably met. And many of you I have. People on here I know you. I've met you. So know that I love you. You know I mean that. And people that have not met me, get over to my website. Get a reading. DavidBeck.com Find me somehow. Be on the lookout. Listen to the radio shows I've been on on the website. You having money challenges? Okay, we'll work something out. But, oh well. All right, good night. Sweet dreams. Remember your dreams. Dreams big. Dream big. Keep looking on this page below. You know, share this video if it means something. If you feel the message needs to get out. And love yourself. Hug yourself. Visualize hugging yourself. May sound a little weird. That's judgment. You're judging yourself. Good night, everyone. Now, how do I stop this? No, that's not how I stop it.